Hi, this is Sherry Schreiber of GettingBetter.com. And as promised in my last video on There Is No Panacea, <laughs> um, I've got a nifty little tool for you, especially if you're starting to get involved in a relationship and you're really excited about that person um, and you, you, you're sensing that your feelings are growing for that person and deepening for that person. Um, you you want to be respectful of the fact that when you say I love you, there's implied permanence to that. So you don't want to say that prematurely, especially if you're in your midlife years. It takes a good two to three years at minimum to really know who you're dealing with. So you don't want to be premature about your declarations of love if you're a normal, healthy, emotionally well person. Um, borderlines tend to bandy about the words, I love you, I can't live without you, I'll love you forever, you're the center of my universe, with casual abandon. It's impulsive. They're, they don't have the emotional development to be circumspect about these things and say, okay, life is about cause and effect. If I say this now, what if I feel differently tomorrow? Um, so if you're a normal, healthy, whole human being who's capable of circumspection, you don't want to say those words prematurely. You want to really respect that phrase and not use it frivolously. When you start to have the sense that your feelings are growing for somebody and you just feel like you love them one day. So the way around this is to say to that person, because it, 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 the fact is, if we repress any emotion, it grows larger. So if you're trying not to say, I love you, because it, it, the more rational side of you understands that it's way too early to make that a profession and declaration in a relationship that's new and hasn't really had a chance to get its sea legs, <laughs> you, you, you kind of kind of paint yourself into a corner. What if you feel differently tomorrow or next week? If they say it to you, what if they feel differently tomorrow or next week? What if they have borderline personality disorder traits or narcissism in them to a pathological extent, and they change their mind about you tomorrow after professing their love to you today? So... I'm asking you to be more responsible about the phrase, I love you. And here's how we do that. You want to use qualifiers. You want to say things like, you know, I know I only know you a short time, but my feelings for you are deepening and I, I'm hoping that I'm not out on this limb by myself. I'm hoping that you might feel similarly. If you want to check in with whether or not that person's on the same page with you and they're sharing your feelings of attachment that are growing. But the real qualifier here is when you find yourself really having those intensely warm and wonderful and gooey feelings for somebody, state that, but put a qualifier on it. In other words, be able to say to them, you know, in this moment in time, I feel so warmly toward you. I feel so close to you. I even love you a little right now. I love you a little right now. In this moment, I'm feeling really close to you. I'm feeling really warm, loving, incredibly rich feelings toward you of affection. This puts a qualifier on it. This takes that implied permanence out of the phrase, I love you. Now, if you end up 
both of you, preferably, <laughs> having a lot of those little episodes, and you're able to say to each other with qualifiers, right now, I'm feeling really close to you, and I'm feeling really loving toward you. And those continue to accumulate and grow over the course of months, sometimes years, depending on how old you are. <laughs> You're not repressing those feelings because the rational part of you knows it's premature to declare those feelings and the permanency that's implicit in those feelings. You're saying them out loud. And in saying them out loud, you kind of diffuse them a little bit. You still feel safe emotionally. You haven't stepped over the wire never to be able to return again. <laughs> to to you know, building that relationship experience you're saying what's true for you in the moment which is by the way the definition of intimacy if you break the word intimacy down it's into me see that is not updating somebody on your familial or romantic history. That's not talking about all your ex-lovers. That's not filling in the blanks for them, like a checklist. What intimacy is, is intimacy. That is about saying what's true for you, about what you're feeling or thinking in the moment. and using qualifiers so that the other person doesn't interpret, oh, wow, he loves me. That means we're going to get married because women are notorious for this shit. You make a woman go, oh, 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 God, oh, God, oh, God, in bed. And because women think and feel simultaneously, we have the capacity to do that, whereas men, not so much. <laughs> and we're feeling these extraordinarily wonderful, sexual, pleasurable feelings. We're automatically thinking in those moments. How can I secure this on a permanent basis? That's what's going on. How can I secure this on a permanent basis? Now, I just had spyware window come up during this video, so I'm hoping it didn't obliterate the picture that you're seeing right now. <laughs> Time will tell. How can I secure this on a permanent basis? Women think and feel simultaneously. Men, not so much. Left-handed men who are more feeling-oriented, more right-brain-oriented? Maybe some of them do. Um, gay men ha are more facile with this feeling and thinking at the same time. But generally speaking, women have a larger corpus callosum, which is the highway between the left lobe of the brain and the right lobe of the brain, and it's a broader highway through which the right lobe and the left lobe can communicate with each other. Okay. She might go to bed with somebody if you're a heterosexual couple, and 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 the guy gets up after climaxing, and uh, he's pulling on his trousers. His head's already at work. He's already on the job. He's left that warm, fuzzy, wonderful, magnificent, pleasurable experience he just had with you in bed. <laughs> Men and women are wired differently. I'm sorry, folks, but we are in certain ways. We're wired differently. Woman wants to lie there, bask in the afterglow, and her whole world is just constellating around this star, which is her partner. <laughs> He's the hub of her wheel. <laughs> Men, not so much. Relationship uh, is, is basically a spoke of their wheel, not the hub. <laughs> so anyway, that's just a little aside. Use qualifiers, my dears, 
Don't get yourself into trouble by experiencing these intense and wonderful and pleasurable sensations with somebody and blurting out, I love you. If somebody does that and they barely know you, they're not a healthy, normal human being. They're not emotionally sound. Be on high alert. You may be dating a borderline. I think that covers the subject. Goodbye. God bless. And be good to yourself first.